Hi there, welcome everybody. Um, so for the coming uh, minutes, I'm going to talk about, uh, about my life work. Um, so this is a bit different that I will uh, not try to do uh, too many of the, uh, the de details. I'm just going to do an overview of the systems uh, that we built over the past uh, uh, years. So I'm going to talk about our uh, trust chain and our micro-economy of bandwidth tokens we are uh, releasing today. So this started all in 2007, when I, uh, I spent a few years of my life uh, measuring BitTorrent, and uh, then I started to improve it uh, from uh, 2005 onwards, so it got published in this journal article you can see here for the details. Um, so yeah, I'm a faculty member at Delft University of Technology, and um, I've been working on this stuff for quite a, uh, some years, and now uh, the lab grown to 45 uh, students. So what I'll be talking a bit is a glimpse a bit about all the stuff we do. So uh, with some students, uh, I asked them to hand in their phones, so we um, tested all the app, which is now also on the App Store live. So you have an Android to Android overlay, and one of the basic foundations if you want to build a good chain. So uh, it actually builds sort of an internet of trust. Uh, that's one of the things we haven't solved over the past uh, decades since Phil Zimmerman published uh, Trust in Public Keys with PGP. That um, you would like to have something that actually works, that fits in a phone where everybody can just trust each other. We have valid electronic signatures. We can just communicate between devices even though they have bad internet. Um, so that's in the app. Um, uh, I'll be talking about that. And what we actually uh, want to do is a, uh, a building trust. So this is all the, uh, the, the things I'll be talking about is why I've been building a, a system like Tribler for the past uh, uh, years. And uh, before that, I did other uh, prototypes. So this is 18 years of building uh, systems with, uh, with trust. So I want to share a bit of uh, an experience with that. And uh, so we run these systems uh, in production, because as an uh, academic, uh, so you, you, you just play around with stuff that works. That's a bit bad for your academic career. Um, but um, it, it's also a lot of fun. And you do better theory with that. Uh, so because we know what are the real problems and stuff that doesn't work, it makes us better academics. Or that's, I, I would say that. Um, yeah, so we basically built something which is uh, an overlay for torrent search and sharing, and it also has its own integrated blockchain for uh, a while. Uh, and for a while, that is really 2007. It was a very primitive ledger. I'll explain the details. So we've been proving that for, uh, yeah, for quite a while, for 11 and a half years. Uh, and now uh, it defines one of the key systems. So I'll be showing you a paper which is uh, online now, where we have a permissionless system with 10,000 transactions per second. Uh, we just don't do any spamming or double spending prevention. Uh, that's up to the application layer. Uh, so yeah, that's an interesting design choice. Um, so we're trying to do this in the, in the real world, so that's why we're building a microeconomy. And I'll have some slides on how we are going to try to do that and working with our various forms of government in our kingdom. Uh, Kingdom of the Netherlands, that is, uh, to make this usable in the real economy. So it is a legally valid uh, proof of identity, a legally valid uh, signature for legal entity, and all these things which we're uh, trying to get uh, in the real economy in the coming decade. Right, so that's slightly audacious. Uh, getting this to work in the real world and talking to lawyers to make it actually valid. So what we're doing is a... Um, uh, yeah, if you want to build distributed systems in the real world uh, for millions, so we had two million installs of our software over the past uh, uh, years. Uh, it's academically pure, uh, no central server, fully distributed, self-organized, everybody's running the same code or sometimes outdated vulnerable versions. Uh, yeah, we just improved that and, and we have a few generation of PhD students to improve it on that and postdocs who slave away on good code and I just try to keep the funding flow going. That's my job. Um, yeah, and occasionally we have to throw stuff away because it's really not good enough. So this is a different magic, uh, uh, the, the magic of creating uh, uh, money. So we live off government grants, uh, so that's different, and we're also doing this for a bit longer than the ICO and all, all these things. Um, and, and when you try to do these systems in production, you see that it's hard. It, 
it takes so much resources. There's not many people who can actually do that. Uh, only the best students uh, uh, can actually uh, succeed uh, in this. And then the results, it's like, yeah, the security, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. I'll show you. Um, distributed system for millions. Right. So if you look a bit at history, how have we created trust between millions of users? If you look a bit, um, and that, that's our ultimate goal, we want to create a more trustworthy internet. Actually, yeah, we, we want to do better than we did in the past. So we had eh, tribler tribes. We had, in the, before the Industrial Revolution, you knew who actually made your food. You, you made the house uh, 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 with, with, with people you knew. Hey, everybody knew each other, direct personal interaction. So you just kept score of who was trustworthy, who was sharing the rabbit after the hunt and uh, helped you uh, to, to build a house. So this, this, this ledger of, um, of helping each other and this uh, uh, free riding prevention and things were all uh, from the past. And then we had a step further. We had brands representing some form of trust or some sort of self-interest construct. Huh? That seems to work. And then we have the sharing economy. That is fascinating. Completely self-regulated. Hey, you have a few beers to drink. You just get in the car with a complete stranger. You ask him to drive you home. And just because he has some stars in some app with some, some, com some company in another country. That, and it actually usually works. Isn't that beautiful? There's no criminal background tracks or something. We know how to do trust in some acceptable level, without any, well, there is some single company in control. So there are actually monopoly, you cannot move your reputation. So that, that, that's, that's, that's interesting. So with my academic perspective, I need something to do before your pension. Let's make that generic and let's make it all cost free and, and uh, all these superstar firms. You just have a single reputation cloud, the internet of trust, you just download to your smartphone, and everybody you see, you actually recognize them with your phone. Your phone would recognize everybody and find a trust path. That's, that's what we're building. So that is not just a microeconomy for BitTorrent tokens and, and Tor-like relaying to, to a YouTube service. It's sort of an operating for society. Hallelujah. Yeah, so that mind all sounds very fuzzy, but nobody graduates in my lab if they don't have running code. So this is, this is very difficult stuff. And um, yeah, we, we've been trying to do the trust in software for, for quite a while. So we had a crack list, so we had a bit of gossip on, on a mailing list, who was trustworthy and who was, who was not doing good deals. Then eBay did some, some star ratings of that. And then we had the sharing economy that was really structured and we had a two-sided marketplace with, uh, where you have very, very strong network effects uh, kicking in. Oh, and then 2014 was a very nice price point for, for trust in market. Completely unregulated exchange of coins for real bank money for, for bitcoins. How did that end, huh? That was probably the biggest bank heist in human history. Um, in 2017, we launched a system in a journal article where you can do some exchanges and, 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 and do bypass the banks. So the, the, I'll tell a little bit more about that. Um, yeah, so these are all interesting things. So how do we trust each other? We have no idea. This is a blank page. We're writing the book. We're trying to do empirically grounded trust models, stuff that works. And we copy from all these people and, and uh, AI people have been doing the Mu MIT, Mu MIT paper from 2001. That is reinforcing that if you have interaction, you build trust, you have a good reputation, people with good reputation get more interactions, etc. And that seems to work sometimes. Um, but in a generic way, nobody has been doing it outside the single uh, application domain reputation, to my knowledge. So we're trying to do a reputation system for a single ecosystem where you have nobody in control. A really big step from the Airbnb and the Mount Gox. You do not need to trust me as the uh, benevolent uh, uh, coding uh, guy uh, for this ecosystem. We create a completely self-regulating uh, economy, 
uh, with real money flowing out, and it launched uh, today after slaving away on it for 2000, since 2007. Yeah, this is my attempt at, at baking the fish architecture, just to stick it in your uh, heads a bit. What is this? We have a token flowing. Uh, so a lot of people have been also working. Uh, we, we had a very nice uh, talk uh, on, the, on the Filecoin initiative, StoreJ. There's, there's more people who try to make this stuff. Uh, so we now have, uh, as of today, we have a, a closed circle, and you, you can install the software and, um, and trade tokens and things. So you can earn tokens with relaying and, and, and things and do that on our own, uh, our own uh, blockchain uh, fabric. Um, and you can transfer it from Android to Android devices without ever need to go on the internet. So we can do offline things. Anyway, so a lot of slides to explain this. And it all lives in Tribler. So that's the stuff uh, uh, we've been programming since 2005. And in 2007, we added a primitive ledger to it. Yeah, and how does it look today? So this is something you can install from Tribler.org or uh, you can go to GitHub and, and do a Git clone uh, uh, of this stuff. It's keyword search. There is no website. It is academically pure. It has an integrated libtorrent engine for uh, 100 megabits per second sustained download of torrents. And uh, you can click on it, video streaming. So it's sort of a YouTube experience without any uh, entity taking advertisement cuts. And uh, you can, we, we hope to enable in the next version direct payments to artists. So 100% of all the revenue goes to either the infrastructure providers or the artists. So you can do keyword first and you have relevance ranking of distributed search. And this is more um, efficient than the Gnutella stuff, of course. Uh, we did some homomorphic crypto uh, in, in uh, this and that, that went nowhere, of course, because you just burn away a lot of bandwidth. Um, we have a distributed voting system, actually. Um, you see some channels, so people can bundle channels and can, and can create a sort of an RSS feed of, uh, which is live update and people can subscribe to that. That's all fully decentralized. You can star it, you can like it. And people who have a lot of likes get more visibility. And so you have this uh, uh, reinforcement of, uh, of content. So this is actually a distributed voting system which is in live production. Uh, but it's not very attack resilient. Of, uh, um, it, 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 this stuff is hard. And you see actual torrents uh, uh, here. So, so the BitTorrent swarm, backward, backwards compiled. And you can do video on demand with the play button or just download. So that is it. Um, the, the very simple functionality. Uh, and so this represents many millions of euros of government grants. Uh, and it actually is, uh, uh, has some tokens flying around in it now. And these tokens, that journey started in uh, 2007. Tit for tat is really cool in BitTorrent. It really works. But what is the incentive to stay online after you've downloaded it, leave it running overnight, and upload? Nobody does that. We saw the measurements. So this is our, um, our badges and our design sketches. So this is not a real code. It's like, let's, let's give people badges if they, they do some recommendation, they help a bit, and, and they open up there, they do, not, they do port forwarding and things, and, and please, please select your high upload, maximum upload speed. That didn't work very well. So what we implemented is um, a gossip network, where people, and I'll have many slides on that, a gossip network where you just tell us like, hey, I uploaded a lot. This is a lot of megabytes. Um, I, I downloaded very little. And then together with these gossip things, and people just uh, uh, gossip how much they upload and, and not what torrent, but just told uh, how much uh, megabyte they uploaded and downloaded. And you make a list of that. So you can just see a bit your social position. Huh? This is my, my account at the time. How many you uploaded and downloaded yourself? And you see on the network what is the top 10 uh, people on this, this Tribler BitTorrent overlay and how much they uploaded and did uh, download it. Right, so let me just tell you uh, with all the stuff we did uh, now and uh, in the coming slides is we do not have any, uh, we base it on double spending uh, detection and not prevention. So that is all different from a lot of other talks uh, you hear today. As a distributed uh, system professor, it's like, I want performance. It needs to have linear, unbounded scalability. It needs to work. So what do you do? You copy the trick from database people. You just loosen the consistency model. If you want to double spend, 
there's the theoretical proof that eventually you will get caught. Uh, okay, let's hope that keeps people honest or that's enough. Uh, it's just like making fake coins in the real world or fake bank accounts uh, or fake, a, uh, um, fake a, uh, bills. Usually you get caught. And um, so as long as you can do the double spending efficiently, it might all work and scale. So quite different philosophy, what we heard today. So this, um, it started um, uh, with a launch with BBC News. We were very pleased. Uh, so collaboration with Harvard University, Professor David Parks, uh, my long-term collaborator. And then um, this new thing, treating bandwidth like an internet. Internet bandwidth like a currency. That was the headline. Nobody cared. No citations to our work, which hurts me, of course, as an academic. Yeah, so it was all a bit primitive, but it worked. Um, so here are the details. So you, you have a ledger where you uh, gossip around uh, things, just, uh, just numbers. Um, and uh, this is the notation we'll be using. Uh, a and C do a transaction. Let's say 40 megabyte of Bitron traffic. I helped you a bit. And um, we just tell everybody. It's like, this person helped me. He helped me. So cool, Pierre. He's a, he's a pro-social behavior. And yeah, if everybody just gossiped that, there's no compromise to scalability. There is no consensus uh, element or something. And everybody's just free to lie. Just like the real world. We have evolved for a few thousand years to deal with lying, cheating, and attacks on these systems. Huh? They're called jails. So in, in, in computer science, should we try to do that? And should we try to avoid d the, the digital jail? Or should we uh, do a different approach? Well, here we just uh, allow lying, so we have scalability. So there's a, a nice um, uh, mathematical write-up together with uh, uh, Berkeley and Harvard with, and with, with some uh, interesting proofs on how to do that. And also an impossibility result for the Sybil attack. That was very interesting and insightful work for me as a, as a system designer. Uh, how does it work? Alice and Bob, they have heard transactions. They heard reports. They, they, they know, uh, they, they observe certain transactions themselves. Eh? They were a party of that transaction, so they have a graph of transactions. Who helped who in this uh, network? And then they exchange the info. So together they know more. It's the anti-entropy uh, approach, which we've been uh, known for, for quite a while. Uh, so Alice uh, uh, gives her uh, information to Bob, or a part of it. And then Bob also shares his info. And look at the magic. Together you know more. And you grow your graph. So this was deployed in 2007. Uh, and then you see uh, the, the, the nodes, the real code, and things. And everybody's free to uh, uh, lie or cheat. But uh, as the years go by, we're making this uh, a bit stronger uh, uh, system. We've got uh, a few generations of five PhD students uh, uh, contribute uh, to this with numerous papers. And then 2012, we, we do uh, a bit of an improvement uh, to this design, uh, a bit more uh, stronger uh, thing. So the previous uh, uh, stuff didn't use any signatures because that would just create a false sense of security. There is no uh, system to prevent this lying uh, that easily. Um, now we uh, formalize it slightly, so you have arbitrary strings and, and you, you, you put them in transaction blocks and you sign it with two people, that's interesting. Um, and then you, 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 the block can be private or public, but that, that, it, uh, uh, that it exists is all public knowledge. And then you, um, you put it in an append-only data structure and uh, you share that. And that is an interesting, powerful model, it seems, or we hope. Um, let me do that in pictures. So we have a transaction with at least two users. Very simple system. I like simple system. Is it has too much math in it and two, then I, I, I don't know if it will actually really, really work uh, and, and is implementable and is robust to use by bankers and central bankers and all these uh, things. So this stuff is very simple. Yes, I, I prefer to use crypto, which is 30 years old at least. So you can use this for production systems, we hope. You just use any uh, signature scheme. Um, you add a transaction block, you chain them together. Uh, this is the logical flow of the arrow, actually, obviously. And um, 
what now happened? You can no longer, in the first line of defense, you can no longer change when you have a, a transaction with somebody. It's irrefutable. Now you actually freeze it in time. You cannot just take out something and replace it with something else. Then you need to change your whole uh, whitewashing or chain. And then what we do again, we do another layer, the third layer of defense. When you transact with somebody, if you put your signature down on, an, 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 on a multi-party agreement, you put it on your own chain. What? So everybody has their own chain in the system, which just linearly grows, and you're responsible for keeping it, and, and if you want to be happy and give it to people, otherwise you might be removed from the system. Ah. Wow, so now the people who, who you deal with, they actually also have stuff on their chain, so you, you start to mix it, and it becomes entangled. And if you now have some fancy mathematics in it, you can, you can call it fast mixing graphs. And then you, you, you may be able to prove some strong security uh, things. Fascinating. So you can see here in the picture uh, in the above row that all these, these, this row of transactions, that A has its own chain. You just linearly append as you transact with people in the network. You just grow your reputation. Uh, and, and everybody has their own genesis block. So we have all these layers of defense, and then because, because of course you need to do something with consensus, otherwise nobody likes it, it needs to have something. Um, yeah, so we, we, we build a global freeze uh, in the system where, um, yeah, it's everybody now shares their endpoint, so each agent, their state is really defined by the end of their, their blockchain, and their end of their personal chain. The last bit, that defines their state. If they didn't that honestly share, and if you collect that, if that would scale, so you, 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 you combine all these things, that last point, you call that a checkpoint block, and you add them all together and you do a hash, then you have a single hash to define the complete system state. That is a strong property. I hope. And if you now have a mechanism design where you need to declare something, okay, you can either lie about your state, you can change your state, but once it is in the public consensus, you can no longer change it. So is there now mining involved? Poof, we just made this nice and easy. Uh, but there's uh, always uh, a price to pay. So, what you now do is you, if your stuff, your transaction is between two checkpoints, which are publicly uh, validated uh, by uh, Byzantine consensus, we have a Badger BFT implementation in Python, and so then um, you have guaranteed detection of tampering prior to the checkpoints. You can read uh, uh, this stuff. So all the things I talk about, when, when you see uh, the bottom row, you can just Google it. Uh, my lab is runs completely openly. Everything we do is already published before it's published, even the draft, the first sketches. I force my students to always talk to me through GitHub, every meetings. Um, so this uh, particular paper already exists on a GitHub uh, uh, ticket before it was sent to, uh, was it IFIP or something? And, um, what does that mean? As long as you have an application layer uh, mechanism where you have a trust function or a reputation function, which we, uh, we are working on and, and, and improving over these past years, um, if you can do some uh, spam with uh, personalized page rank, uh, incremental personalized page rank, the, these sort of algorithms, we have some mux flow for years, but that, that didn't work so nicely. Um, you have a horizontal scalability. So this is one of the key uh, records, I think. So you can download the Python code and try this out for yourself. So we can do uh, permissionless uh, 10,000 transactions per second. Because it doesn't do anything. It is simple. It's like a database. It's like you cannot do coins. You cannot do double spending uh, prevention. But you can do high grade, enterprise grade, maybe even that sort of buzzword, um, database-like transactions, irrefutable, tamper-proof uh, recording things. Uh, with, with some fancy uh, consensus uh, things. The Badger uh, BFT. Right, so moving on. So we have some constructions now, we can do something, we have some code. What are we going to build on top of this? So this is an, out, uh, an outstanding problem of, uh, of uh, accounting. 
Um, then we have a, a very store coin uh, papers. Yeah? So you have the anonymity layer, but what is now the incentive? Yeah, who has an incentive to run a relay, a guard, or, or especially an exit node? Uh, there's uh, Lira, Goldthorpe, th there's various proposals. Nothing ever got implemented because it was not good enough. So we have an implementation, which is also still pending and not uh, up to Tor level uh, uh, snuffs. It, it, but it works and it's deployed and you can download it as of today. Uh, so you, there was various implementation of BitTorrent suiting where you can get e even real Bitcoins when the transaction cost was still acceptable. And that now is unified in our bandwidth token. And here you see token arithmetic on our trust chain work. And so everybody has their own personal blockchain. You just have these blocks, you give unit, you take unit. And so you can see Alice giving to Bob, she receives and she gives away again. And then you see what somebody's standing is in the network. Very simple, very fast. Uh, yeah, there's a little problem. So if you do that, uh, as also was in the previous speaker, uh, yeah, what about traffic correlation and things? And well, you just have a millisecond accurate payout uh, of your coins. Well, that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna de gonna mess up your onion routing protection. So um, this is one of the things we uh, luckily got published at at Financial Crypto 2015. It's like no, I just help you for for many gigabytes and stuff, but just. Just, just pay me next week, really, pay me next week. Otherwise, we de-anonymize uh, stuff. And you, you're gonna help people with all these gigabytes. Uh, our network is now doing six terabytes uh, per day. Imagine you, you're working for six terabytes per day and you, you only get paid next week. You need a bit of trust. So this stuff needs to bootstrap over time. You need to have long-lived identities. That's not very good. You need to have pseudonyms. So we're growing this ecosystem. And um, uh, yeah, we're also doing some standardization. So this is a draft uh, I managed to pen up um, 18 January. Um, so yeah, this is the, the, the formal definition in 19 pages of, uh, of, of this whole ecosystem and also the overlay uh, that uh, is online. So just Google trust chain, uh, trust chain without a space in between ITF and it should give you to the formal specification. They're still very much in draft, but... Um, should get you going. Uh, this is all deployed, and here's a picture of the real world uh, trust chain stuff. And um, yeah, um, it's costly to be to have some privacy. So as we're making a YouTube clone uh, experience with uh, based on BitTorrent, we implemented our talk. Uh, our uh, so it's not the real Tor network. We made a, a copy of the, uh, the Tor specifications and how to do things, but we don't have central directory service. Everything is uncompromising distributed. So we're really not as secure as the real Tor uh, stuff. But um, it should scale if everybody just donate, donated. And you can see how much donations do you need if you have a downloader, you have somebody who's seeding a BitTorrent file. So we, we, we implemented hidden seeding uh, in there. It somewhat works, but not much. Every gigabyte you download, there is 19 gigabyte of network consumption. That is a lot of tokens you're spending. So you need to have a lot of tokens if you want to have privacy in our BitTorrent overlay. That's our key use case for TrustChain and how we get our uh, thousands of users uh, expanded, hopefully. So this is what the user sees. It's very simple. You just download something. You want to do the tick box, you want to do normal BitTorrent download, you want to do some proxy stuff. Oh, and after you're done, you want to just seed it nakedly to the world, or you want to do some, some privacy enhancing stuff. It's just two clicks. And then this is the GUI. Um, this is actually the web GUI. W what is this blockchain for users? How do you translate that? We had also various industrial designers to help us out, eh? how to communicate this sort of concepts to the user. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not easy. So you give to the community and you take from the community. Eh? This is 36 people you helped and 34 people which helped you. That's what, what the sort of messages you communicate uh, uh, when, you, eh, when you were trying to do this YouTube distributed YouTube functionality. People need to help out. And you see your ratio, your, your upload and download ratio as you're helping build this infrastructure in time. Hopefully, simple enough, uh, because 
that's the next step we have not taken yet. If you're a free rider, you will no longer get service. But uh, we'll see if that's needed. Probably it is. Right, so now I explained a bit uh, of our token economy. Spending it, why you need to spend it, the one on 13. The, costs a lot of gigabytes. Here you see uh, what is now on Google Play, uh, how to move it to, to uh, this internet of trust of signatures, a very simple implementation. It's just a three megabyte something uh, on, a, um, on uh, the Google Play Store app. It, it, it uses all the signature stuff. And um, yeah, you just, you have an overlay where everybody's public key and you can just click it and send people messages. You have a mailbox of incoming contracts people want you to sign. You can just send out blocks. You can view other people's blocks. It's just a very simple framework to, uh, to, with a very uh, simple uh, fabric. So everybody can just uh, install their phone, modify the source code, and start spamming this whole network to bits. Please don't do that. But, um, and that's now on the Google Store, so you can freely try that out. And um, so the bit, uh, what's happening is, it is a complete phone-to-phone -phone network. There's not a single server, not even a bootstrap server. The bootstrap server is just a, a pixel phone with a hard-coded, a single hard-coded IP number, so D does that and the network won't bootstrap. So that's one of the first Android-to-Android -Android networks, so it has a carrier grade not traversal with a, a few puncture messages. Um, so. Moving on, um, you have um, uh, offline token transfer. So once, because you have these, these contracts and things, uh, you just have megabytes, and you can give these megabyte tokens, uh, you can put them in a QR code, so what you can move from the PC realm, you can move that to the Android app realm by just uh, having things, and you do some animation on things. And um, so you can move tokens uh, around, and you can give it to somebody, you could just scan it. But when is it transferred? Does it need to be in the proof of work, proof of stake, delegated? No, it's just you see it, you copy it, and you can double spend it. And so this is, this is a, a completely different uh, approach. If you see the QR code, you just copy it, but you also have it. So uh, this, this whole IOU uh, uh, thinking uh, approach. Um, right, so uh, we want to have this stuff in the real economy. So what about if, if you make people really autonomous and you put uh, the private key on things, so we have a, um, a threshold encryption, uh, this, this Shamir secret sharing and, and all these nice uh, things. So these are two operational prototypes. Th these are not in our deployed app. Uh, but you, you, you just uh, have your overlay, you click on people. It's like, these people, this public key represents my friend. I will put some shards at this person, this person, and I'm saying that I don't trust my friends that much. I need them actually all to recover, or minus one, because, well, they can also lose stuff. So we have two implementations of, of, of that uh, here, and that's also on our, uh, on our GitHub uh, wiki page, how to uh, get to that. Uh, so that's operational. Uh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, we, we, you want to do some real, you can, you can store it in a physical and clonable function. This is a, yeah, uh, some nice uh, Arduino hardware. Um, so this is a patent-free, fully software, uh, physical and clonable function. You, you, it's basically storing your, um, uh, private public, uh, your private key pair uh, inside a, a memory thing, and you, you, you measure the transistors. It's, it's, it's fun stuff. So we're making progress there. Um, Right, where are we now? So we can, we, can, we can make coins, we can move coins. We have some users who are using BitTorrent and they can become private. So we really have something which might actually be used by, by quite a few thousand people or, or like the, the, the part of the 200 million that use BitTorrent today or even radical thinking is, is, is a chunk of the, the 1 billion that use YouTube. Um, you want to sell it. So we'll have an operational decentralized market, which is upper, uh, operational in a preview release. You can do the, the, the bid and ask uh, things, which are also just transactions. Uh, so you create a bid and ask uh, set, and um, you have a transaction block, and we do a special version of trade uh, chain uh, of that. So that's just a, in our trust chain. A, a specific form of the transaction block is then for uh, the online market. 
Um, so you have the, the bid and ask a, a price point, and then you have uh, matching with the limit order uh, book implemented, decentralized also. Um, you, have, you have two payments? That is interesting. If you now want to reduce the risk, if you, you, you transact with a stranger online, what you can do, if it's, uh, you can chop it up a bit, you, you want to sell a bit of your tokens, you do a little bit initial risk taking, then you do, okay, it worked, it worked, okay, let's do it again, and let's do it again. And so you do incremental transfer uh, and payments, so that, that would work if we had uh, Ethereum or blockchain, uh, some fabric which has uh, fast confirmation time. And on our side, it's just, yeah, signing a token is just a single signature and you're moved your coins. So that is now operational in the, um, our, uh, on our, uh, uh, preview version of uh, our uh, next version. So that's not production ready yet. Uh, so this is done in a snapshot. So you can, so this is, let me, let me just clarify. Hey, you have a BitTorrent client with a YouTube-like user interface experience. It has its own blockchain. It has a Tor-like overlay. And when you try to do market transaction, you need to give the password, initialization password of your Bitcoin wallet. Did you still get that? Right. So, um, how do you do? Uh, how do you get these tokens in an automated way? So, we've been doing this since 2013 uh, to do credit mining uh, for that. That you just optimize and you find interesting swarms to join, and then you uh, maximize uh, your upload. Um, so, this is a tag. This is a pre-release uh, which can be found in our releases. Uh, we published about an early version of that in 2015. In the academic circle, it sort of worked. There was a few graphs but it was really not production ready. So today it's also not production ready, so that's why it's a mining preview with, this one also has the integrated decentralized market in it. Um, so, at the end, a bit the fun bit. We have uh, some bots, uh, created some bots with a few generation of, uh, of students. Um, so to create sort of real autonomous workers for you uh, with real economic activity. Yeah? We have our microeconomy. We have uh, a few million uh, downloads of our code over the past years. So we want to have a, a few million revenue uh, uh, like all these token economies, uh, but without any, uh, any ICOs or things. So it's, it's, uh, everything goes to artists or the infrastructure provider or the robots. So we have a towards a robot economy. Um, so we have some very basic, very basic replication and, and primitive genetic evolution of these bots. So if they don't function anymore, they just die. That's sort of the safety mechanism. Um, and they, ha they are autonomous, that they control money. They have real money. So this is what the agent-based, uh, the, Asia, the AI uh, community, the multi-agent system people have been doing for like 25 years, 20 years. Uh, and now we're starting to, because of Bitcoin, we actually start to be able to do this uh, stuff. Um, so is this now a computer which does not need repair? Yeah, if it does not for some function, it does not behave anymore, it will not uh, get money, it will not uh, live on. And you don't need, yeah, you have only indirect control and these things, do they have an owner? Well, I'm probably legally responsible, but I'm, I'm coming from the Netherlands, huh? so everything is legal, thankfully. So um, what we released uh, yesterday is the Clodomate. So it's sort of a self-replication toolkit for, uh, for, uh, for this sort of uh, autonomous uh, systems. Um, so this tool code uh, has a helper function for all the life management. So you can buy your own server, you pay with bitcoins. Oh yeah, and I, I love my students. It's like, what? You hired humans as slaves to solve your captchas? That's nasty. But it works, so it's cool. And uh, yeah, you can, you can also buy a VPN for enhanced privacy and you can run a Tor-like exit node uh, on them. And that gives you a lot of coins as income. So we have an economic model uh, now which is fully resolving and uh, uh, that should hopefully work. So you earn tokens with privacy, you sell it on the open market. That's the robot business model. Um, yeah, this is a new generation of students. They don't, they don't, they, 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 they talk to me in pictures. So that works, buying a VPS, uh, the code is out there, and you, you, your VPN, your, your bot can then uh, not only buy a, a VPS, but um, and replicate itself, but also a VPN. 
and these things are these things are cheap, uh, except the transaction cost is a bit bit high. Um, next up is um, you run a Tor-like exit. Uh, this is the Tribler torrent only uh, uh, Tor overlay, uh, our own implementation in Python and things. So it's uh, is different than the real security of the real Tor network. We follow uh, the, their protocol to the letter when possible, when not involving central servers. Um, yeah, so then you have these components and then you announce yourself, you give yourself a name and you announce yourself in Twitter that you're alive and then um, you have your wallet, you have your life, you can replicate, you can a bit of primitive evolution with some parameter tweaking. Um, if you've heard of this life form um, less than a minute ago, but if you heard from a life form 58,000 seconds ago, it died. So let's call this an organism, it's probably not, but. But yeah, so everybody has DAOs, we have SAOs now. Um, wrapping up, so why is an academic institution deploying self-replicating robots and messing with all this stuff? If you want to create real trust with software without involving any other uh, legal entities or dependent on banks or governments, then this is, does not have any middleman, complete permission permissionless uh, innovation. We're creating, uh, so I, I still have stuff to do for the coming decades, creating this generic trust system, this Internet of Trust, IOT. You heard of it. And what we want to do is have legal signatures in this. Self-sovereign identities. We have some, some implementations of that. Uh, you can recover things. It's not usable yet. You build this web of trust in public identifiers, trade everything. Uh, so in the journal article just mentioned here uh, below, we did a, uh, on our uh, computer cluster, uh, we did a complete implementation of the Uber matching uh, engine uh, decentralized with a New York taxi data set, see how that would go. You can run Uber like services with just phones. No servers needed, no legal entities, no lawsuit, lawyer proof, Zero margin to the infrastructure provider or the natural monopoly if you, if you believe certain economics papers. Um, you just cost you 5% efficiency, matching efficiency. So uh, that's what uh, we had uh, there. Um, yeah, and, and then because of being uh, uh, in, a, uh, in, uh, in Europe, we have a PSD2 and things. So we have some self sovereign identity that's our legal compliance. So if you want to do this, in our little micro economy that we're, we're working now, if you want to move this to the real economy over the coming decades, uh, you need to be lawyer proof uh, and also talk to lawyers. Are there any legal people in the audience here? All right. Who, who is an engineer and likes talking to legal people? You should do that more. If you want to be relevant, well, maybe not, but it's your choice. It just, uh, yeah, th this, is, this is a big step for, to be legally compliant. Uh, so what I talked about, oh, that's interesting. What I talked today about is um, the, um, um, the blockchain layer, a bit of consensus and the decentralized market. Um, so what we have in this journal paper is, is the whole stack, which we also audaciously call the IPv8 overlay between Android devices and only Android uh, devices. Uh, that's also in the ITF uh, uh, trust chain uh, graph. Um, so that's, um, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the show and, and maybe star even our GitHub uh, repo. And uh, we're hiring in both uh, new tenure track professors, postdocs, PhD. You know how to code and do it well, then please be welcome. Thank you. And questions, yeah. Yeah, it's really fascinating. I'm really interested in what you're doing and kind of your grand vision for all of this. Um, I had a question about the properties of a good reputation function. You know, one thing I worry about is what we see in real life a lot of times is that it'll be kind of a power law if you let it be pretty unbounded where a star system will develop and some people have such a big reputation that they can afford to cheat especially against people with low reputation and not suffer any consequences because there's so many other people who think highly of them. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, very true. So this uh, a society dominated by a single reputation system, that, 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 that could be quite something. So as, as I don't want to have any legal responsibility or moral uh, hazards and sleep at night, let's give the user 
full control over what trust and reputation ranking, eh, personalized things, so the user should immediately be able to click on various reputation systems they proposed. Eh, you want to have an open ecosystem. You even want to have a viral GPL-like uh, uh, system that if you play in this system, you will only have access to the, uh, to the data of others if you publish the reputation system and the estimation of others you use. Because exactly the things that, that you have the top sharks, you sort of like, can you imagine living in a society where the 1% dominates everything? You don't want that, right? <laughs> Deja vu. Thank you. Thank you.